Hello everyone. Welcome back. Hope you are doing well. Today we are going to discuss about congestion in physical design. All right. Let's get started. Typically, there is a limit for the number of nets that can be routed through a particular area. So, when the number of routing tracks available is less than the number of tracks required, then we have the routing congestion. We also have placement congestion, which we will discuss shortly. Let's look at some of the causes for the congestion. High standard cell density in a small region would cause placement congestion. This can be either local or global. High pin density in a small area would contribute to the routing congestion. Basically, if the design has any complex cells such as AOI, OAI and any large multiplexers, they will have more pins in a small area which requires more routing channels to connect them. And placement of standard cells, especially at the macro edges, would cause the routing congestion because the router needs to connect the standard cell pins through a small area. This happens when we miss to create halos or placement blockages around macro edges. A track plan which is not well optimized would contribute to routing congestion. For example, if we have a track plan which has more routing tracks defined for power and ground but not for signal and clock. Improper macro placement would also cause routing congestion. For example, if macros are not placed according to their pin orientation or the connectivity between them. Addition of many buffers, especially at the I.O. pin region, would cause a local routing congestion. Because sometimes because of too aggressive I.O. constraints, tool try to add many buffers in the core region, which requires more routing channels to connect to the I.O. pins. Finally, a bad floor plan would contribute to both placement and routing congestion. For example, when macros are placed not based on their connectivity or it could be due to insufficient die area, etc. Here is an example congestion summary report from a PNR tool. Let's go through this to understand more. Basically, our core region is divided into multiple GRCs. GRC here stands for Global Routing Cell and congestion is analyzed within each GRC, all right? Looking at the first line here, which is both disks, which means the results here are for both horizontal and vertical directions. The number of GRCs, which is 39,508, represents the number of GRC edges in the design that have an overflow of one or more and 0.15 percentage represents the percentage of GRC edges that have an overflow of one or more. And max equals to 12 here means that the maximum number for the overflow routes for a single GRC edge among all GRC edges is 12. For example, assume there are 20 tracks available at a GRC edge, but due to congestion, 32 tracks are going through it which means the overflow for this edge is 12. And the sum of total number of overflow routes for all GRC edges is 40,600, which is the overflow, okay? Now looking at the second line, which is H routing, which means the results here are for only the horizontal routes, okay? So max five here represents the maximum overflow in the horizontal direction is 5 and there are two such GRC edges, okay? Similarly, we can interpret the results from the third line which is for only vertical routes. 
some of the critical impacts of routing congestion would be it can cause routing detours which means the nets in the congested region travel longer distances which in turn causing the rc value to be quite different from the virtual routing estimates longer nets eventually impacts the timing qr tools might end up with more shorts and drcs in the congested regions especially since their primary job is to get the design fully connected finally a severe congestion can even make the design unroutable making the convergence quite difficult so it's always a good idea to fix congestion at the placement stage in the design cycle before we look into how to resolve congestion first we need to get congestion maps and reports ready by running global router at the placement stage once we have maps then we can start analyzing routing congestion layer by layer or by grcs and the placement congestion is analyzed by looking at the cell and pin density maps okay so this way we will have more debug points as we know high cell density can cause congestion so adjusting cell density in the congested regions will help us reduce congestion for example in this particular command we are trying to reduce the cell density to 65 percentage typically from a default value of 95 percentage in a region which is defined by coordinates x1 y1 and x2 y2 as we can see in this picture the cells in the defined region are now spread apart and now we have more routing resources so this way we can reduce the congestion we can play around with pnr tool options to improve the congestion further for example using congestion driven option basically during congestion driven placement the cells which are sitting together which is causing congestion are spread apart we can increase the effort level to high if needed we can also use congestion driven restructuring methods if the tool supports creating and modifying blockages is an other option to reduce the congestion basically blockages are divided into three types the first one is soft which means the block region can only have buffers or inverters during the optimization the second one is hard which will prevent any standard cell in the block region and the last and the third one is partial blockage wherein we have the flexibility to control the type of cell that can be placed in the block region an example command where we are trying to create a placement blockage for a given boundary and setting the block percentage to 30 and the type is soft which means we are allowing only buffers and inverters for the optimization next one is halo we typically create halos when we have macros in the design okay this is also called macro padding okay this is like a placement blockage around the edge of the macro this is to make sure no standard cell is placed near the pins of macros and corners of macros thereby giving an extra routing channel and extra space for the macro pin connections to the standard cells we can abut two macros or we can define a placement blockage between macros as shown in this picture if our design has more complex logic and have cells which have more pin density we can use cell or module padding to reduce the congestion for example this particular command is used to create a keypot margin on a cell instance or on the entire module itself we can also specify the type of keypot margin and also the direction around the cell boundary okay moving on 
decomposing the complex logic is an other solution to fix the congestion. Basically, when we have AOI, OAI and large muxes in the design, it's better to decompose them in order to guide the PNR tool to place them and route them better. For example, as shown in this picture, a large multiplexer is being decomposed to a smaller mux. Reordering scan chains help us reduce the congestion. Basically, during DFT optimizations in the backend flow, will reduce the scan wire length, which will in turn improve the scan timing. Finally, modifying floor plan will also help us reduce the congestion. For example, if our design has macros, we can play around with macro placement, macro spacing, and also the pin orientation. But if our design is purely standard cell based design, then we can check if the further growth in the die area is possible. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you find it useful. Please subscribe for more videos. See you in the next one. Bye.